In this chapter, we'll be finally talking about the very basis of JavaScript. And that basis is that JavaScript is based on objects. We will be discussing and demonstrating how to define objects, what their contents are, and how we can work with them. So I have mentioned a couple times that we have primitive types and object types in JavaScript. Primitive types represent and can, or can, or represent or contain a piece of simple data. So you have, I don't know, a number like 22, a Boolean value, true or false, and you have, I don't know, and a string, so string. So you have some sort of, some primitive types like that. Objects, on the other hand, contain multiple pieces of data. And an object is can be defined as an abstract entity that has various attributes. And an object, in a way, is a package or a, a package collection of data. So let's have a look at an object. So we're going to say this. We're going to have a variable. To make an object in JavaScript, we first define some sort of variable. Let's call it obj. And then you're going to open it with some curly braces like this. So that's basically we're saying we have an object now in JavaScript. And you can define it on one line, like, like in a sequence. But usually we define objects on multiple lines. So now inside, we're going to define the contents of an object. For now, we're going to be working with attributes or sort of like properties of an object. So we're going to call this one prop1. And then you, you, you basically define the name of the property, write a semicolon, and then you have your data value. It can be any sort of data. So you have inside an object, maybe primitive data, primitive data types, or even functions, which we'll see later on. So here we just have string test, and each attribute is separated by a comma. I know I keep saying attributes and uh, properties. You can use them interchangeably, but we tend to use properties of objects, and which you'll see later methods as well, which are basically functions within objects. But we'll talk about that later. So here we have, here we often write it spaced out like this, and we're going to have prop21137. And the last property of the object does not have a comma. So, and that's, and we write a semicolon at the end to end the variable declaration. So that's an object. So how would we access these uh, sort of um, properties of the object? Well, so let's go into the console line again, console log. If we want to access something inside from inside the object, we do it like this. Object dot and then the property name. So you have prop three. Well, it should be prop two. Let me fix that. Prop two. Okay, so that's how you access a property of an object. So you have the object name which is basically the variable name, dot, whatever your property name is. And since it's just a straight up value, you just call it directly like this. So let me open my web page. And you'll see that I get 1137. I got that property, the data contained inside property two. So this data right here, 11337, is synonymous with the property name. Now you can't just go about calling the data directly just so you know. That's not valid because you only can call things that are defined as properties inside the function. You can't get the literal data itself by calling it in such a way I just, which I just so showed you. So you have to call it based on the name of the property. So you can't really get the value directly from, in, from the code However, this will return the value, so you don't really need to call it directly. You don't need to be able to call the, the, the value directly out of nowhere. You have to call it from the object, if that makes sense. So, yeah, I won't confuse any more there, so let's continue. So we have another way of defining object as well in, in uh, JavaScript. 
you may have seen you've probably seen it before and actually you have seen it before because I used it in a couple other chapters like a chapter on a um, on strings where I create a new string object if you remember so I'm gonna do this same way right now so I'm gonna have a new object called computer and we're gonna say new and then we're gonna have object and what this did it created an object this is a bit like a basic object without anything so in JavaScript this is the basis for all other objects in JavaScript because all jo this is like the root of all objects it's kind of maybe if you don't understand that but um, this is like the great the most com the greatest common most common ancestor of all their objects in um, JavaScript so because everything comes from objects so this is the granddaddy object of them all and we're saying here basically we're creating a new object of our own it's not a string it's not a boolean value it's not an array and it's not a function it's its own object called computer so that's how you create one way to create another an object so there's no you might not need this per se you can just use the curly braces it's the equal equivalent but you can do it this way if you'd like so and we then we define now so we have to define now the properties but we didn't describe we didn't define it with curly braces so how do we define the properties well to do that you can simply it's pretty simple JavaScript is pretty cool in this way you just call your objects name so you type in the objects name dot and then you type in a new attribute name or pro property name excuse me and this name can you, you can pretty much name it anything so you just write dot whatever the name is and then you're gonna type in now whatever value it is so you're setting computer you're making a new um, attribute if it's not defined already I mean it makes a new attribute so I should have said that before so when you type dot and then a name of a, a name of a property or I keep mixing it property and attribute I'll keep trying to use property excuse me so you name a new property like this you are going to create a new property if it already isn't defined but in this case it isn't defined so it makes a new property and then we're going to assign a value so let's say it's just an example Intel i3 3.0 gigahertz I don't know just an example so now the computer object has the attribute processor our property processor with the name with the value set to Intel i3 3.0 gigahertz and we're gonna do the same thing for another attribute called GPU equals NVIDIA 980 GTX just an example nothing in particular so we will discuss details of these properties in the next section but if you recall this I said before we made it with a string so we 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 made strings with this sort of um, similar decoration we will get to that in a second but let me just show you how now we can actually call these values and they'll turn out to print to the screen and that means they're valid properties so computer so let's just see computer by itself actually maybe that'll be cooler um, and then here you go so you get the object now with this property so you get an object with the attribute uh, properties processor you set to Intel i3 blah 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 and GPU set to NVIDIA and 980 GTX so our so we successfully made a object and we could do the same thing with OBJ so let's see that as well OBJ and let's see what we get and you get the same sort of thing just it's an object now with the property one and property two all right so sorry I cut off a little bit before I wanted to show that so remember the new using the new keyword and then creating a string object from the last chapter well we can pretty much do that with any data type we have available in JavaScript so let's see that let's see that right now so we have we can let's make, we can make the following so it's froze for a second whoops 
So we have var, let's say an array equals, you can create an array. And then in the parentheses, you define a size. So if you remember from the section on arrays, instead of using square brackets, empty square brackets, you can define the initial size of an array using creating by creating an object that's an array. So var, uh, let's say str equals new string. And we have here inside is the initial value of the string. So let's say this is a string object. And then we can also have a Boolean object. So var bool equals new Boolean. And in here you can define true or false depending on, let's say true. So the initial value of the op Boolean object is true. And then we're going to say var function, actually no, var func, let's call it equals new function. So this is one way to define a function. And we'll get into the function one in the next chapter, so we won't really talk about this one. So let's delete that. So, okay. Here what we did is create new objects. And if you... If you notice anything when I worked with functions before, these are in the same color and they have parentheses and they have parameters, like kind of like functions, which we'll see in the next chapter. And we've also actually played with functions already, so you may be you might see a pattern going on here. Well, these are something called constructors. Basically, it's a function that sets the initial values of a um, of a uh, object to be created or rather in in a JavaScript they're often called prototypes which we'll get in which we'll get into in the next coming sections so don't worry about that too much well basically prototypes means we define some sort of initial f sort of attribute uh, properties and attributes to be set properties and methods actually to be set inside our function based on some sort of arguments put into here. Don't worry if that confuses you right now. We'll get into that in the later sections and even in the next chapter as well. So, but it's essential part of making objects in JavaScript. What we essentially did here is we create an object, initialize its, its value to whatever is in the parentheses. That's what we basically did. And that's a constructor, that's a prototype. So yeah, that's what functions are. I mean, objects, excuse me, so I'm so sorry. All right, so going back to our object, the C, the um, this computer right here, just one last thing before I end this tutorial. I can show you now, you can actually change the values of the at, of the um, properties. So you can change whatever values this these are by doing the following. You just simply access the attribute again. So processor equals now we're going to set it to something else i don't know um actually let's use the gpu maybe that's a little better gpu we'll name it amd radeon we'll just name it like that and now when we display the computer object when we access the computer object the value will now be amd radeon so if the attribute already i mean the property already exists that means the value will be replaced, so you can assign it directly if you'd like. And if to recap, if the property is not already declared or defined, defined and declared, like like in prop one in this example in the first object we created, then it, it the object will have a new property added to it with the new value set to that property. Okay, I think I'll stop here for now. I hope. I didn't confuse you too much, and we hope to see you next time.